Greetings and salutations my dearest friends. My name is Samantha and today I'm going to be wrapping up my recent reads. I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite reads in the last two-ish months, May and June, because I suck at wrap-ups and now I'm just going to throw all of the books in this one video. Fun. Hello, how are you? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It has been a minute since I filmed and an even longer minute since I actually talked about the books I was reading each month. I kind of made it a goal of mine to actually do wrap-ups and TBRs every month because in the billion years that I've been here on booktube, I haven't even been on book two that long. I never really filmed wrap ups because I simply exhaust myself when I'm editing too long and having to listen to myself yap. Wrap ups are like the yap of the century because I'm just talking and talking and talking about the dozens of books that I read. Recently I feel like I've had so many amazing reads, so many five star reads and I just I want to talk to you guys about them and we're just going to wrap it all up okay. I have like 20 plus books that we're going to talk about. It's going to be rapid fire kind of me just chit-chatting about what you missed. I don't even remember what was the last month that I wrapped you guys up. Let me sure shower. Go into the chapel and we're gonna get married. This will be a collection of the last two months. I will have a separate July wrap up but right now we're going to be talking about May and June. I'm going to organize it by talking about my five star reads first because I'm really excited to talk about some of my favorite books I've read this past couple months and then we'll slowly go down to the four stars and the three stars and the two stars and I even have a DNF so like I said, the good, the bad, and the ugly, darling. I have 24 books to talk about. I read 12 books in each month. Some quick statistics for the star ratings. Out of the 24 books that I read, I had six five stars, nine four stars, seven three stars, one two star, and then I had a DNF, which we will get to at the end. All right, let's start real motherfucking strong and talk about a fantasy book that I gave five stars, and that was The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. You guys know I was really in my Brandy Sandy era, okay, for like a solid two months, and I definitely do want to continue to read his backlist, and I need to finish this series, but I was just in a fantasy mood, and I was absolutely loving Brandon Sanderson. A lot of these books I do have reading vlogs so any books that I mention that I have a reading vlog in I will leave down below. My only shameless plug I won't say it anymore but you know watch my videos or whatever. <laughs> Anyways this is such a classic and really really loved fantasy series and I completely understand why obviously I gave it five stars. This series kind of plays off the idea if the chosen one was evil, was the villain, if the dark lord won. And he did in this series. So you're following a group called the Ska. They are a repressed group that is being treated horribly by their government. So they create this rebellious army to overthrow the Lord Ruler. The magic system in this book is wicked cool. It is essentially a form of alchemy. Kind of able to manipulate metals. Some can affect other people's emotions. Some can become even stronger. And usually people only have control of one metal. And it is even rarer to be able to control many and our heroine is what they call a misborn and able to control multiple metals and participates in this rebellion it very much gives prince of egypt let my people go vibes and i just love it it's just an incredible book brandon sanderson is so immensely talented obviously his fan base is huge his backlist is huge and i'm just slowly making my way through it so yeah this was a five star read another kind of like obvious five star for me is in this shadow longing by marina vivancos oh my gosh marina is one of my favorite authors ever she predominantly writes on kindle limited and her books are so sweepingly romantic deeply emotional and just the embodiment of like queer love stories. I just love everything she does. Miss Shadow Longing is the third book in her Coven Tie series. You can technically read it as a standalone but I highly recommend reading the entire series because it is so incredibly unique. I have not read anything that compares to it. Anything that even comes remotely 
close to it. Exist in a world that is a dom sub universe, which essentially means that people are either born as dominant or submissive. Depending on their designation, they have different biological needs. It's very similar to Omega Verse. The entire series also takes place in a coven of witches as well. So again, read the whole series, but in this shadow longing follows Cross, who is a dominant, and he comes from a coven of witches that participated in blood magic or chaos magic as what they call it and it's the darkest most forbidden magic that you could do Cross, our hero and another person from the coven who you see in another book work together to kind of like report this coven to the council get them disbanded their safety they end up getting placed into another coven that is really a place for them to heal however our hero cross is feeling a lot of guilt for being a part of his old coven and all of the crimes that he did as well everyone around him sees him as this kind and strong friend and individual but he just sees himself as so broken lots of discussion of mental health and our hero is just going through it he hasn't been able to seen with a partner in a really long time which is quite dangerous for him as a dominant ends up hiring a professional to come and be his submissive and seen with him and it follows the romance this really is a book about healing and learning to move past your past trauma and mistakes and I feel like every book that Madina writes is really just a love letter to the queer community and I love her I adore her she is an icon a legend and I love every book that she ever writes right, the next two books are some contemporary romances that I gave five stars I know I know I'm not usually a contemporary romance girly but I've been reading a lot of good ones I'm gonna quickly breeze through these next two because I do have an upcoming reading vlog that you're going to see these in I don't know which video I'm posting first but I was doing a reading vlog where I was reading my friend and Jessica from Peace of Books favorite books and these two are some of her all-time favorites so I read them off of her recommendation. First one is Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. This is a very angsty second chance romance but follows our heroine who is a wedding planner and she ends up booking a pretty huge client. It is a celebrity and their wedding is going to be the wedding of the century so she's absolutely excited for this opportunity. However, she has to actually work with her ex-boyfriend in order to make the wedding happen. Her ex-boyfriend is a very popular florist that the couple has requested. This book toggles back and forth between past and present. You get to see our couple falling in love for the first time and how it didn't work out and now it is present time and you get to see them rekindling their relationship. This one is so angsty. I love it. I love a second chance romance where we get like a lot of backstory and a lot of flashbacks and this really gave it to me. This is a grumpy sunshine pairing. I feel like the hero in this book is the epitome of a book boyfriend. I loved every bit of this book. It was also really funny which kind of like lightened the more emotional angsty bits to it and I just think it was flawlessly done. So five stars and I'm excited to read more from Julie Soto because that was the first book I read by her. And then the next one is another angsty second chance romance. That is one of my favorite tropes. I love second chance romances and that is Forget Me Not by Kiwi Tyler. Um, I didn't intend to read two books with the same title. It kind of just happened that way. This book is messy. Oh my goodness gracious, this book is messy. We follow a married couple in the beginning of the book that is going through a divorce. And our heroine gets a call that her soon-to-be ex-husband was in a terrible car accident. So she ends up going to the hospital. And when she gets there, she realizes that he lost his memory or at least bits of his memory and he doesn't remember them actually filing for divorce. The reason that our couple is breaking up is because our hero actually cheated on our heroine. Our hero wakes up and finds out that he is going through a divorce and that he cheated on the love of his life. He is so mortified, gobsmacked if you will. He is so down bad for this woman and cannot even fathom in any circumstance in the future why he would do something like this so he is trying to get his memory back but also rekindle his marriage yes this does have a cheating trope and i'm gonna be a little controversial and say that that's not like a huge red flag for me i mean in real life sure but like in a book like give me the angst give me the trauma <laughs> I know some people really hate that trope, but like I just feel like both of our characters are incredibly flawed. They both make so many mistakes, but they're also like so fucking good together at the same time. The book is so sexy and angsty and you just have to read it to understand it. I gave it five stars, but both of our characters are a goddamn mess the whole book. This next book is not a romance. It is not a cozy mystery. 
I don't really know what genre it falls in, but I sure did love it, and that is Lost Coast Literary by Ellie Alexander. Ellie Alexander is one of my favorite authors of all time, but I really enjoy her cozy mysteries, and this book was very different from her because it falls more under like a women's fiction vibe. It follows our heroine who is a very talented author and she gets the absolute dream internship that she's always wanted in New York. And as she is there, she ends up getting a call from her uncle that her grandmother passed away and left everything to her. The house, the money, the will, everything is in her name. And she is completely floored because she has not talked to this side of her family in years. Father had a falling out with this side of the family after her mother died. She knows absolutely nothing about them so she's very confused why everything is being left to her. So she goes to this small town to settle the estate and when she gets there she realizes that her grandmother's condition of the will is that she has to finish these lost manuscripts okay her grandmother owned a editing and publishing agency which is essentially what our heroine wants to do as a career as well so as she's writing in these manuscripts she realizes that whatever she writes comes true whatever she puts on the pens and papers happens in real life what type of magic is happening with these manuscripts and with her writing and this town this book has a lot to do with grief our heroine has lost many people in her family so it really is just a story of i would i guess if i had to pick like a trope or a genre to place this in it would be magical realism because it is told in a contemporary setting but it does have this magical element of these manuscripts and i just think it was so unique and so well done and i really liked it the next book i gave five stars was queen of diamonds by marie mckay this is a mafia omega verse it is a part of a series called the high roller omega series all four books are also written by different authors they kind of just like team together to write this collection of mafia uh, Omega verse romances. These books were so fucking fantastic. Absolutely obsessed, and it put me in such an Omega verse mood. And I ended up reading so much more Omega verses after this book, which I'll talk about in this video. But this was the best one out of the series. It is a dark, angsty mafia romance. Those are heroine who is working at a club, and the reason she works there is because it houses omegas who are in danger heroine actually grew up as a mafia princess herself until she met her set matches and matches are essentially the same as like faded mates if you're not familiar with omegaverse i have a whole video on exactly what it is but it's essentially if shifter romances and faded mates had a baby people are born as either an alpha beta or an omega and depending on their designation they have different biological needs and urges very similar to a dom sub universe my favorite type of omega verse is reverse harem or why choose which this book is our heroine meets her faded mates they're another mafia family kind of designed for them to get married and create an alliance between their families however our heroine ends up rejecting her faded mates for her to reject the bond it causes a lot of physical and emotional pain to everyone involved this is a second chance romance and the heroes in this book are so fucking pissed they're so mad that she rejected them because not only did she reject their bond but she ended up with one of the hero's younger brother everyone ends up leaving that life altogether but the heroes are still so pissed off and they end up kidnapping her you later have to find out that there was a reason why the heroine rejected the bond and it really was to protect her heroes now she is running from the man that she tried to protect her faded mates from i love this book so much because our heroine was a badass easily one of my favorite heroines that i've ever read about so strong so amazing and the heroes were these unhinged absolutely fucking bonkers crazy heroes that i just <laughs> i loved and it was a five star one of my favorite omega verses i definitely don't think that if you're new to omega verse though that you will get this book this is for people who really love the genre really love the subtrope of omega verse like you just get it if you've never read an Omegaverse, I just, I fear this will not make sense to you. I fear you will not enjoy it as much as you potentially could. So, I, I loved it though. Okay, so those are all of my five star reads. Now we're headed into the four stars. And I'm going to continue with that High Roller Omegaverse series. After I read and loved that book, I was like, well, I just need to read every book in this little collection. Even though it's written by different authors. And I'm really, really happy I did. Because I really did love all four books in this series. Queen of Diamonds was just like my favorite one. But the other ones were also really good. So the next one is called Queen of Hearts by Miss Sarah Blue. I'm very familiar with Sarah Blue's writing. I've read pretty much her entire backlist and I just, 
I love everything she does. She does Omegaverse so fucking good. This book follows our heroine, Elena, who is a mafia princess as well. Her father was a mafioso and absolutely spoiled her rotten. However, he ends up passing away and her brother ends up taking up the mantle. Her brother does not like her and is completely unhinged and his number one plan is to marry her off to the highest bidder to get money and create alliances and he does not care like if his sister is happy. So she is terrified of who her brother is going to match her with so she runs away to the club that I mentioned in the first book. So meeting her first client who pays for her services they are a scent match. Turns out that the client and his pack are from the Irish Mafia but she has no idea about it. So she is essentially getting involved with the very people that she was trying to run from but oh, I love this one. Another book where our heroes are completely unhinged. It has all of that Omegaverse goodness, nodding and thotting, nesting and oh it's just the best. I love it. But again I do feel like this is a book that is really for Omegaverse lovers. If you love that genre and understand that genre you will love this book. The reason I give that disclaimer is because some people go into Omegaverse books kind of reading it almost as a contemporary book and it just it doesn't hit the same way. I really feel like this collection of books just does dark Omegaverse really really well and if you like Omegaverse if you're a fan fiction AO3 Wattpad bitch these are the books for you. I wouldn't recommend this as like an introduction to Omegaverse. I would recommend this to people who have read a lot of Omegaverse and you're looking for something kind of like unique and fresh. And when I picked up the series, I was like, oh, bitch, Omegaverse is so good. <laughs> Don't come for me if you've never read an Omegaverse and you read this book and you're confused because the girls that get it, get it. And the girls that don't, don't. I'm sorry. This one I gave four stars is Queen of Spades by Jillian West. This follows our heroine who also grew up in a mafia family. When she was younger, a mafia family killed her parents and her bodyguards and she barely escaped from it. So now she is running away from the mafia life. However, her brother has been looking for her for years and years and years and sends out a team of bodyguards to find her. And in that, she also finds her scent matches. It has so many amazing tropes. It's a dark mafia romance. It's a bodyguard romance really strong heroine. Absolutely loved this one. After I read this book, I loved the writing style and the side characters so freaking much that I ended up reading a ton of books by Jillian West. You'll see that in my July wrap up, but I pretty much made my way through her entire backlist because I was such a fan of this book in particular. So yeah, I'm really excited. I picked up this series because it introduced me to some new authors. The last book in the series is called Queen of Clubs by Alicia Williams. I am currently reading this right now. This is a second chance rock star romance. It's really not surrounded by the mafia like the other books were. This one is really really good. Like I said I'm reading it right now um, and it's the last book in that little collection of stories. Just keep on keeping on with the Omegaverse vibe because I did read a few novellas that were Omegaverse. The first one is called Be Mine by K. L. Moore. This one is a low angst high steam reverse harem Omegaverse. It follows our heroine who is an Omega Omega, and her entire life she never really expected to bond with a pack. She really thrives off of her own independence but now that she's a little bit older she's ready to settle down. She's kind of tired of spending her heats alone. And very surprisingly one day at her job she ends up meeting another Omega that she is immensely drawn to which is pretty rare just for like dynamics. Omegas being paired together is not entirely common. However she is so drawn to him even though he is mated to a full pack. Ends up convincing this Omega and his pack to to assist her through her heats and it follows the romance. I give this book four stars and it's probably the steamiest, like the steamiest book we read in the past couple of months. If you like Omegaverse because of the heats and the nodding and all of the sexy bits, th this is the book for you. It has every kink trope you could possibly think of. There's pegging, there's BDSM, there's a zaddy kink, there's there's everything. I loved it. Another novella was technically like two together. The first one is My Begrudging Scent Matches by Naomi Phillips. This is another reverse harem Omegaverse and it's also an office romance. Heroine is another Omega that never really saw herself bonding with a pack. She's very independent. She works in an office and she's really really good at her job and her company ends up hiring two new employees and when they get there she realizes that they are her faded mates. I like this one because you have an independent heroine and two cinnamon heroes that are just so down bad for her. I do think our heroine was a little bit stubborn so I technically gave this like a three and a half stars 
Well, we can round it to four for the sake of the video. What I liked even more was the novella after this. This is called Scent Matches Ever After. And this is essentially a collection of short stories following our first Polly couple. You know what? I think I said this was reverse harem. No, ma'am. It's Polly. It is Polly. Our heroes are in an existing relationship and they are looking to add an Omega to their pack, which is where our heroine comes in. She is their faded mates. They're all in a relationship with each other. It's Polly. Anyways, really did like that one. But what I loved even more was the collection of stories after, which is called Scent Matches Ever After. And this was essentially like an extended epilogue. Personally, I love epilogues. I love seeing couples happy and in love, and that's essentially what this novella was. I gave it four stars. Moving on to some more four stars. Month of June, I hosted the Novellathon with some of my dear friends here on BookTube. It's a readathon where we read a bunch of novellas. The buddy pick for that month was Perfect Matcha by Erin McLennan. This was technically a reread for me. This is a male male friends to lovers novella that's so good. The book starts off by following our hero Theo, who ends up getting invited to his ex boyfriend's wedding. His ex boyfriend and him, you know, broke up on fine terms but he definitely does not want to show up to this wedding alone so he ends up propositioning our hero Camden who is his best friend to kind of help him find a date for the wedding well it turns out that Camden has been like hopelessly in love with him for the longest time and it follows their friends lovers romance of Erin McLennan and all of the novellas that she writes so yeah this was a reread for me and I gave it four stars the novella that I read for that readathon was Not So Casual by Ashley Rain it's a male male office romance our hero Alexander has had a crush on his secretary Elias for the longest time but because they have a working relationship he doesn't want to ruin that or make him uncomfortable it turns out that Elias has also hopelessly been in love with him they end up having a very heated moment in their office and fall into like this friends with benefits situation that turns into admitting their real feelings for one another it's steamy, it's cute, pretty low angst. I liked it a lot. I gave it four stars. Their male male romance that I gave four stars is Halo by E.M. Lindsay. It starts off by following our hero who is engaged to be married and he finds his fiance cheating on him in his bed with his best friend. When this happens, he realizes that his fiance was obviously an awful person, did not treat him right. Hero does have a disability in this book and the people around him just do not support him or treat him right. So he decides that he is going to go on the honeymoon by himself. When he gets there, he hires a driver to take him to a hockey game and he gets into the wrong car. Now the car that he gets into is our other hero who is a professional sex worker and thinks that he is his client for the night, okay? So when they realize the mix-up, they still decide to go out together. Other hero is a sex worker, so he decides to hire him for his services. Very much like Pretty Woman vibes. I loved this one. It was a sexy book. I mean, our hero is a sex worker in this book, but gosh, it's so sweet. The way they love each other is just so freaking sweet, and I really, really liked this one. So, highly recommend. I am losing steam very quickly, so we're just gonna fly through these next couple books. Another four star read was Perfectly Peculiar Pixie by MJ May. This is a part of her Perfect Pixie series, and you do have to read it in order, so I don't. I don't want to ruin it for you guys. I actually have a whole video of this series and some MJ May books that I read and love, so I'll leave that down below. So I won't dive too deep into this one. But again, this is the fifth book in the Perfect Pixie series. The entire series is a collection of male-male paranormal romances with very unique pairings. The first book follows a werewolf and a pixie. There's a book in this series that follows a zombie and a fairy. Even pretty much every book in the series, four or five stars. They're just so well done, and I feel like this was a really good installment to the series. The last four star was another novella, and it is Heart of a Wounded Hero by Casey Mint. It follows our heroine who is really grieving. Her brother was in the military and passed away, so she ends up staying at her brother brother's beach house. She gets there, she realizes that someone is already there. It is our hero who was her brother's best friend. He was also in the military and he kind of made a promise to her brother that he was going to take care of his sister if anything happened to him. Also grieving, he feels a lot of responsibility and the two of them kind of just grieve together and also 
fall in love. It's a really sweet novella. I feel like it had like a lot of emotion for such a short story. I really like Casey Mint, but sometimes her books can be hit or miss, but this one was a really good one. That was my last four stars. So we're going to move into the three stars, two stars, and the DNFs. And I will literally breeze past these so fast because I'm so tired of talking. The first three star I gave was Romancing Mr. Bridgerton by Julia Quinn. This was a reread for me. I reread this with Jessica and Christy. It was kind of like a bonus book in our Historical Hellions book club. We all obviously reread it for the new Bridgerton season. Um, this is the fourth book in the Bridgerton series. It follows Colin and Penelope. It is a friend to lovers romance and is probably my least favorite book in the series. I'm not a Colin fan nor am I a Penelope fan. There really is nothing for me to say about this book because it is so popular and I've talked about it in various live shows and videos. You guys know I'm not the biggest Colin fan. That's not a surprise, but I still enjoyed the overall reading experience and I gave it three stars, kind of like a middle of the road reread for me. Next book is another historic romance, but this is a fantasy historic romance. It is Bree Spells and Bridegrooms by Sarah Wallace. This one I gave like three and a half stars, which now thinking about it, I feel like it it's really not on the same level. Comparing it to some of my other three stars in this video, I feel like this could actually be four stars because I did really enjoy this book. The way this book was described to me is as if Bridgerton was in a fantasy world and also queer. I kind of saw this. This was a low angst enemies to lovers romance. This entire series exists in a world where magic exists. People of the Fae tend to have more magical abilities than humans do in this world and their laws and their rules and even like your right to inherit a title really depends on how much magic you possess. So the way they view things is very skewed and not fair to the human population. So one of our heroes goes to the magical council to kind of like create a rule that is a little bit more fair across the board. He is a human and he ends up having to work with his academic rival who is Faye and the two of them have to kind of combine their knowledge to create this new law that is more fair. Definite grumpy sunshine opposites attract romance. I feel like this book would be really good if you like the pomp and circumstance of historical romance. You like the balls and the titles and the scandals but you also love fantasy books and magic. I feel like it's a good blend of all that. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to change my rating. I think I originally gave it three and a half stars. I'm going to bump it up to four stars because upon recollection, it was really a four star read. Next book that I gave three stars is called Odd Man Rush. This was a poly romance. This book starts off by following a married couple. Our hero is a professional hockey player. He met his wife in high school. Even though they did date, they were always with our other heroine as well and they were all friends. The couple ends up breaking up after high school because they go to different colleges. Our two heroines end up going to the same college. Our hero goes to pursue his hockey career. Once they separate, our heroines actually start dating in college. They break up because they move on to different lives. The original high school couple, they get together. Am I making sense? I really hope I'm making sense. Now this original high school couple, they reconnect, second chance romance, mwah, mwah, mwah. they get married, he's a professional hockey player, they're living the great life, whatever. They end up reconnecting with the other friend from high school, friend that dated the girl, all of that stuff. The married couple is like, you know what? We actually love you and we want you to be a third in our couple. So a married couple inviting their friend to join them, she does, creates a poly romance, end of story. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I feel like I described that so weird but there's so many tropes in here hockey romance second chance romance poly romance just it was fun it was steamy it was angsty i gave this one three stars it's not my favorite poly romance because i don't feel like the relationships were evenly balanced out I feel like there was this heroine in the middle who wanted her cake and wanted it to eat it too she couldn't decide between the two loves of her life her high school sweetheart turned husband turned professional hockey player hunk of a man. So our other heroine who was her best friend and she was in love with when they went to college and kind of like her by awakening, she couldn't decide between the two of them. So she's like, you know what? I want both of you. Come to mama. Normally I'm all for more people, more fun in this economy, more incomes just makes more sense. But I don't feel like, I don't feel like they were a cohesive unit. I had better poly romances, but this one was still fun. I gave it three stars. Anyways, I cannot talk about that book anymore. <laughs> I'm moving on. Let's talk about some of my book picks. I have two book clubs. I have a historical romance book club, and I also have a cozy mystery book club. So for my cozy mystery book club, I read Boiled Over by Barbara 
Ross. This book follows our heroine who lives in Maine. Family owns a crab broil business in this small town. Hired for a festival that brings in a lot of tourists into the town and is really good exposure for their business. The day of the festival, they find a dead body cooking in their crab broil and underneath the place where they put their crab broil. Dead body okay does not look good for their business no ma'am so our heroine needs to figure out what the heck is happening who killed this person what's going on the closing mystery was interesting i gave it three stars i was so invested i listened to the audiobook and it was a journey a journey but the cast of characters was so large and i don't feel like anyone could possibly piece together who the murderer was what the backstory was like it just there was subplots to the subplots to the subplots. It was doing so much. Although I enjoyed the journey, I did feel like it was a little convoluted and could have been edited down a little bit more. So I settled with a three-star rating. And my next two picks were for my Historical Hellions book club. We read a bunch of historical romances published before the year 2000. May pick was His Forbidden Touch by Shelley Thacker. I gave this one three stars. This one was fine. It was good. It was my favorite historical romance but also not like the worst thing I've ever read. Heroine is going to be set up to marry someone and she kind of like wants to take matters into her own hands so she ends up marrying her bodyguard the man that is supposed to escort her to her future husband and it follows the romance. It was fine again not the most memorable historical romance but it was a time. Next historical Hellions pick that we had I actually DNF'd and it was Oh Come the Morning by Shannon Drake. It was a Highlander romance and also kind of like a marriage of convenience. Two characters are put together in an arranged marriage by their king. They don't have much choice in the matter. They're not entirely happy with the fact because they're both kind of in love with different people. Um I hated this book. I obviously I did not like this book. I didn't finish it. I found the heroine absolutely insufferable. Insufferable. She just said and did stupid things that got them in stupid situations. I wasn't a fan of it. I did read a good chunk of it. Like I think I had maybe like a hundred pages left and I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I DNF'd it. If I were to give it a rating, I probably would have given it like two stars, maybe one star. I usually don't rate books that I don't finish. I don't rate books that I don't finish because I didn't finish them. But I got really far in this one, so if I would give it a rating, I guess it would be like a one star, two star. I don't know. The last book, I'm not going to go into too much detail because one, I didn't like it. Two, I did a reading vlog for it that you'll see very soon. The last one, it is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I gave this book two stars. It's a fantasy book that is really, really popular and I just didn't vibe with it. I understood what the author was trying to do. I think it had some really cool ideas and I can understand why other people liked it. But I just, in comparison to like other fantasy books that I've read, I could not understand the hype truly. I wasn't a fan of the main characters, the side characters, the plot, the magic system. I just think it wasn't well fleshed out and yeah that's it. I'm not even gonna go into the plot. It's a really popular book that a lot of people like. I can understand why but I just think for me it didn't hit all the marks and it has like a lot of tropes that I just typically don't like anyways so that is it. 24 books. 24 motherfucking books i'm exhausted i'm never ever ever combining wrap-ups again because this was uh, crazy um imagine if i was still in my days where i was reading like 30 books a month like a book a day oh no i would i would have not even attempted this video anyways those were some books that i read recently thank you guys <laughs> thank you guys for watching this video as my wrap-ups are behind but it was still really fun to chat with you guys about my recent reads. If you stayed this video, not only do you get a gold fucking star, but you're also like my best friend ever. We're officially best friends. I hope you know that. I hope you're okay with that. I love you so much. If you did, if you did watch this very lengthy, very chaotic video, leave me an emoji. Leave me a star in the comments down below so I know you watched this whole video and that we're bookish besties. I love you guys. As always, thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. It means the world to me. I hope you guys are all staying happy and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Goodbye! 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 I love you so freaking much, and I'm so fucking tired. Oh my god. 24 books in a video. I'm never doing that again. Actually, don't take me up on that promise, because I probably will do this again. <laughs>